welcome back to another video. Today, I am going to do a little unboxing for you guys, a little book haul. I know, I love books. I'm sorry guys, I know. Uh, there is one book missing from my haul, but it is coming later. But let's get into it. Okay. Oh, I can see already that one book is like bent a little. Mm, that's really annoying. Okay. Uh, hopefully it'll be fixed. First we have Truly Devious by Maureen Johnson. I have seen this everywhere and I've wanted to pick this up for a while. It's, this looks pretty. There's uh, some cool little designs on each chapter, which is kind of cool. I like when there's illustrations and things like that inside a book. It makes it more like visually pleasing. Uh, I think the cover is really pretty as well. I really like this blue. And let me read to you the blurb. Look, a riddle. Time for fun. Should we use a rope or a gun? Ellingham Academy is a famous private school in Vermont founded by an early 20th century tycoon for the best and brightest student, students around. When Ellingham's wife and daughter were kidnapped, the only clue was a mocking riddle listing methods of murder signed with the frightening pseudonym Truly Devious. Their disappearance became one of the great unsolved crimes in history. Many years later, true crime aficionado Stevie Bell is set to begin her first year at the Academy, and she is determined to solve the, this cold case. That is, she will solve it when she gets a grip on her demanding new school life and her housemates. The inventor, the novelist, the actor, the artist, and the jokester. But Truly Devious makes a surprise return. The past has crawled out of its grave, and someone has gotten away with murder. Truly Devious is the first novel in a murder mystery trilogy by New York Times bestselling author Maureen Johnson. That's exciting. There's a lot of little reviews that they put on books and some are comparing it to Agatha Christie. I love Agatha Christie, so I like this kind of... I like murder mysteries. It's in like detective novels. I really like that. And it's cool that it's a, a trilogy because that means that if I like it, then I have two more books to follow. I like series, so this is exciting. I'm really excited to get into this. Next we have What If It's Us by Becky Albertalli and Adam Silvera. I've heard a lot about these um, authors uh, separately, and this is a book they wrote together, obviously. And I really wanna read other things that they have. Uh, I know that Becky Albertalli wrote Simon vs. the Homo Sapiens Agenda and a bunch of other books in with those same characters that are really popular. Um, and I think Adam Silvera wrote some other things that are really popular as well, but I can't remember the titles. So I'm excited about it. I like the cover because this blue is beautiful and it's yellow on the side. The blurb says, meet Arthur and Ben. Arthur is only in New York for the summer, but if Broadway has taught him anything, it's that the universe can deliver a show-stopping romance when you least expect it. Ben thinks the universe needs to mind its own business. If it had his back, he wouldn't be carrying a box of his ex-boyfriend's things. But after a chance meeting at the post office, the boys leave wondering what exactly the universe does have in store for them. What if they can't find each other again? What if they do and then can't nail a first date? What if Arthur tries too hard to make it work and Ben doesn't try hard enough? What if life really isn't like a Broadway musical? But what if it is? Oh, that sounds really cute. Oh, it's like a little summer romance. Cool, yeah, let's, I'm excited for that as well. Next we have the book that is a little bit bent, but hopefully once it's been in the, um, you know, in, in the bookshelves, it's gonna be fixed. And this is Heartless by Marissa Meyer. I have also seen this so much, and I know I'm kind of like late to the party. This cover is also really pretty. It's like really metallic and reflective and on the side as well. And this is a retelling of the Queen of Hearts from Alice in Wonderland. Okay, so this says, Long before Alice fell down the rabbit hole, and before the roses were painted red, the Queen of Hearts was just a girl in love for the first time. I've been really into retellings lately. I've read uh, like two or three. I think this is probably my third one. I'm currently reading Circe, which is a retelling of Greek, Greek mythology, kind of. And I read To Kill a Kingdom, I think, which is a retelling of The Little Mermaid, I'm pretty sure. I, think, I don't know if that's the one. Yeah, To Kill a Kingdom, I think that's the one. And I really like them because it's a completely different story. And it, it's kind of like, you know, that movie Maleficent that with Angelina Jolie, 
where it's basically a retelling, so a different perspective of what would have made that person into the villain that we thought they were. So I really like that. Next we have Red Queen by Victoria Aveyard. Aveyard, yeah. And I've also seen this a lot and just, you know, I took my time getting into it. And the blurb for this says, this is a world divided by blood, red or silver. The reds are commoners ruled by a silver elite in the possession of godlike superpowers. And to 17 year old mayor, a red girl from the poverty stricken stilts, it seems like nothing will ever change. But Mare possesses a deadly talent of her own, one that threatens to destroy the balance of power. Fearful of her potential, the Silvers hide Mare in plain view, declaring her a long-lost Silver Princess. Knowing that one false move will mean her death, Mare must use her new position to bring down the regime, from the inside. Now Mare has entered a game of betrayal and lies. This is Reds against Silvers, Prince against Prince, and Mare against her own heart. Ooh. Sounds good as well. I'm really excited for that. Next we have The Sun is also a star and I mean look at it. It's so pretty. And this is by Nicola Yoon. I had an, I bought another book from her and it, it was in my last haul and it was called Everything Everything. I still haven't read that, but um I think I will probably read this one first. Or maybe I'll read both of them this month hopefully. This says The Story of a Girl, a Boy and the Universe. Natasha I'm a girl who believes in science and facts, not fate, not destiny, or dreams that will never come true. I'm definitely not the kind of girl who meets a cute boy on a crowded New York City street and falls in love with him. Not when my family is 12 hours away from being deported to Jamaica. Falling in love with him won't be my story. Daniel, I've always been the good son, the good student, living up to my parents' high expectations. Never the poet or the dreamer, but when I see her, I forget about all that. Something about Natasha makes me think that fate has something much more extraordinary in store for both of us. The universe. Every moment in our lives has brought us to this single moment. A million futures lie before us. Which one will come true? Exciting as well, but probably predictable, I'm assuming. I don't know. We'll, we'll see. We'll see. Okay, and the last book in here is a hardcover. And this is Bright Young Dead by Jessica Fellows. And the reason I bought this as a hardcover is because I have the first one in the series, because obviously this is a series. I have the first one in the series in a hardcover and it like really makes my brain hurt to not have like a collection of books, a series, and not have them all in the same edition. I know it's weird, but I just like it. I think it looks nicer. I but the first one I bought for like a euro in a secondhand store, so I think it's okay that I spent more money on this one because if you split the difference, it'll be fine. Nobody's judging me. Okay, I'm moving on. I think the cover is beautiful. I like this uh, like Art Nouveau kind of thing because this is set in the 1920s, so it it's really fitting. And let's see what it looks like. Oh, it's orange on the inside, which is kind of cool. And then in the cover without the dust cover is this elephant on it, I think. Love that. That's very beautiful. And let's see. So this is the second one in the series of the Midford Murders. And I really liked the first one, so that's why I was excited to get this one. Um, and this says, A Masquerade Ball, 1925. A murder at Pamela Midford's 18th birthday party sees the Midford sisters and their maid, Louisa Cannon, thrust into a world where the aristocratic hedonism of the bright young things meets organized crime. Notorious all-female gang of thieves, the 40 elephants, and their near-mythical leader, Alice Diamond. As the glitz of the bright young things crashes into the world of the Midford sisters, their maid, Louisa Cannon, finds herself at the scene of a gripping murder mystery. It has another blurb on the inside, which also seems very interesting, so I'm going to read that to you too. Um, it says, He fell from the, from the church. Meet the bright young things, the rabble-rousing hedonists of the 1920s whose treasure hunts were a media obsession. One such dangerous game takes place at the 18th birthday party of Pamela Mitford, but ends in tragedy as cruel, charismatic Adrian Curtis is pushed to his death from the bell tower of the church neighboring the Mitford home, Ashtill Manor. The police quickly identify the killer as a, as a maid, Dulcie, who is discovered to be a member of a notorious gang of female thieves, the 40 Elephants. But Louisa Cannon, chaperone of the Midford girls and a former criminal herself, 
believes Dulcie to be innocent, and alongside Pamela and Nancy Mitford, sets out to clear the girl's name, all while the real killer may only be steps away. Ooh. Okay, I'm really excited for this one. Yeah, that's everything for today. Let me know if you've read any of these or if you're excited for anything um, on this list to see what I thought at the end of the month. Hopefully I will have read all of these by the end of the month. That's the plan because obviously I'm participating in a readathon, so it would be ideal if I could finish all the books that I set out to read. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave it a like and a comment and consider subscribing to my channel if you haven't already. Okay, that is all of the things that I have to say. I hope you're having a wonderful day. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye!